I'd like to extend a special welcome this morning to those who are in the overflow lobby, or as Brandy said, the party room. Makes me want to go over there too. Uh, we're delighted that you're here with us this morning, and uh, normally we have plenty of room on Sunday mornings, both inside and in the parking lot, so we'd love to have you regularly if you could make it. We'd love to have you here. About 10 days ago, I saw an interesting ad on TV. As the voiceover came on, it said, this year, make the magic of Easter come alive. Bring home a lint bunny. <laughs> so I couldn't resist. I brought home three. One for each service. And according to the ad, this chocolate bunny in gold foil wrapping with the red bow is supposed to make the magic of Easter come alive. Now, I bought these on Monday evening, and I left them in my office all week. No magic. But when I got here this morning, all of a sudden, there were more. And then I thought back and I saw Brandy come in yesterday afternoon. <laughs> when I think about magic, the first thing that comes to my mind is magic tricks, sleight of hand, deception. But when I think about Easter, what comes to mind is life, new life, real life. And even though today happens to be April Fool's Day, Easter is not about magic, tricks, or deception. It's all about the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the center of our focus. Hear what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He says these words, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of of God. Listen to the story of the power of God as recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 21. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, went inside, he saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. 
Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together, that they will be acceptable in your sight as we think about and rejoice in the truth of our risen Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. God's power opens tombs. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each give eyewitness accounts of the empty tomb. They each provide a different perspective on what was seen and experienced. However, they agree on what was important. The tomb was empty. In the Gospel of John, the eyewitness accounts are given by Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John. Mary goes out to the tomb while it's still dark outside. When she got there, she saw that the stone had been removed, and so she went and told Peter and John. Think about that for a second. It takes time. This was before cell phone technology. There were no text messages. She said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. The assumption, the body was stolen. When Peter and John heard the news from Mary, they ran to see what happened. Of course, as guys, they raced. John beat Peter to the tomb. He looked in but stood outside. Peter ran right past John into the tomb. John went in. They saw the grave clothes. John saw and believed. Believed what? That the body was simply gone? Or something more? We're not sure. We're left to wonder. Why did John tell us this? He tells us this more than simply to establish the fact that the body was gone. The open tomb and the grave clothes are evidence which point to an alternative truth. The alternative truth? Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. But in their grief, they still didn't put all this together. However, God's power opened the tomb. God's power opens eyes. The best we can tell is that Mary, after she told Peter and John, came back to the tomb and she lingered outside. She wept. She looked into the tomb. She didn't see Jesus' body. She saw two angels and had a conversation with them. Think about that for a minute. A conversation with angels. And then she saw a gardener and had a conversation with him. Well, she thought it was the gardener until he said her name. Mary. Mary saw the Lord. She realized it wasn't the gardener. She had eyes to see that it was the teacher. It was her Lord. I think that's the last thing that Mary expected to see When she went there, she went there looking for his body. She wanted to know if the gardener had carried him away. And like Mary, we don't go to cemeteries expecting to see people who have died alive. But Jesus appeared. He appeared first to Mary, and then he appeared to his disciples, who, by the way, were gathered together in a room locked because they were afraid. And then he appeared to Thomas and then the others. The point is this. Jesus was raised from the dead. That is the central issue of the Christian faith. Tim Keller of Redeemer Church 
in New York City says, the issue on which everything stands is not whether or not you like Christianity, but whether or not he was raised from the dead. And I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ not only rose, but he continues to show up for those who have hearts to believe and eyes to see. You see, God's power opens tombs. And God's power opens eyes. Easter is all about God's power. It's about God's power to bring life out of death. It's about resurrection. A little over two months ago, I was reading an article written by the Reverend Michael Coffey, who was writing his reflections about resurrection in the journal for preaching. He said this, and I quote, the resurrection of Jesus Christ transformed his followers from fear to faith, from despair to radical hope, from timid hiding to bold action in the public realm. He continued, resurrection is that last thing that we want to be true because it validates the cross and everything Jesus said about it. If Jesus simply died on the cross and stayed dead and quiet, his call to follow his way could be nicely forgotten. However, Jesus' resurrection makes everything he called his disciples to live true and unavoidable. Jesus' resurrection makes the church dangerous. Is Neroten Presbyterian Church dangerous? A church is dangerous not because of its members, not because of its visitors. A church is dangerous because of the power of God to transform. The power of God can transform individuals and families, schools, communities, businesses, cultures, and nations. We cannot control that power. The question is this. Will we allow God's dangerous transforming power to be at work in us and through us? Or do we simply want to be known in the greater community as that pretty little brick church on the corner of Neroten Avenue and Post Road? The first Sunday of every month, we come to this table and we celebrate God's dangerous and transforming power. As we eat the bread, we remember that Jesus' body was given for us because of our sin. As we share the cup, we remember that Jesus' blood was shed for us, that we might know forgiveness and new life. At this table, we are nourished, we are sustained, we are empowered by God in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And as followers of Jesus Christ, the same power that was at work in Christ is at work in us. The power to receive and offer forgiveness. The power to reconcile strained and broken relationships. The power to care for those who seem unlovable, to heal those whose bodies are broken. And the power to serve those that we might never, ever want to serve. God's power opens tombs. God's power opens eyes and brings life out of the midst of death. Now, as much as I like Easter, it's not about chocolate bunnies. It's not about jelly beans or peeps or magic tricks, or foolishness, or deception. 
It's all about the power of the resurrection. May we have eyes to see and hearts to know that truth. Last week, all those who were in worship received a black wristband engraved with the words, Word Friday. We gave that out so people would remember what Jesus said and did and endured for you and me. On your way in today, you had the opportunity to take a white wristband. If you didn't take it on the way in, please make sure to get one on the way out. It's engraved with the word alive. We want you to remember. To remember that the tomb is empty. To remember that Jesus Christ is alive. And to remember that the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is from God and at work in you and me. God's power opens tombs. It opens eyes. And it brings life out of the midst of death. No fooling. Amen.